In the previous class, we had seen the different satellite applications with respect to DTH, DBS, channels, and its services. <coughs> In this class, we are going to see the satellite applications that are used in Intelsat, Inmarsat, Insat, and Vsat. Let us see the Intelsat family first. So, Intelsat 1 was used for uh, the 40 circuits or one television channel. Intelsat 2 was used for 240 circuits or one television channel. Intelsat 3 was given for four television channels with 1500 circuits. Intelsat 4 was given for 3070 circuits with two television channels. Intelsat 4A was given for 6250 circuits plus two television channels. Intelsat 5 was given for 12,000 circuits plus two television channels. The Intelsat 9 series is in service. 10 and 11 series are under development and it will be launched within two or three years. This is the development of Intelsat family. So the current deployments of Intelsat feed during October 2002 was given like this. Seven out nine at three out four point five degrees. It is seven out nine is your altitude. You can see nine out five at three hundred and thirty five point five degrees. Similarly, the Intel side fleet which has been deployed for different latitudes and at inclination angles. So what are the services from this Intelsat? Is that carrier services, internet backbone, broadcast services, video solutions. So the carrier services was provided by international and domestic telephony data. Whereas the corporate network service was done for transactional applications. The internet backbone is backbone for all internet trunking and all internet services. Whereas the broadcast services like uh, satellite news gathering, sports, special events, studio to studio, direct to home are all examples of broadcast satellite services. Video solutions, occasional usage of television system is an example of that service. So this is the frequency spectrum of the satellite communication of Intelsat. You have the frequency spectrum of extremely very low frequency, which is zero to three kilohertz. Very low frequency 3 to 30 kilohertz, radio navigation and maritime 9 to 540 kilohertz, low frequency 30 to 300 kilohertz, medium frequency 300 to 3000 kilohertz. AM radio broadcast 540 to 1630 kilohertz, travelers information service around 1600 kilohertz, high frequency 30. 3 to 30 megahertz, shortwave radio broadcast 5.95 to 26.1 megahertz is the frequency, very high frequency 30 to 300 megahertz, low band television channel 2 in specification 6 is having a range of 54 to 88 megahertz mid band, FM radio broadcast is around 88 to 174 megahertz, high band television channel 7 to 13 uses 174 to 216 megahertz super band mobile for television system uses 216 to 600 megahertz whereas the ultra high frequency the range is 300 to 3000 megahertz so this uses two bands channels 14 to 70 L band which is again uh, differentiated into 472 806 megahertz and 500 to 1500 megahertz. 
Next is the personal communication services. 1850 to 1990 megahertz. The unlicensed, the unlicensed uh, personal communication system devices, which is in the range of 1910 to 1930 megahertz. Then comes the super high frequency microwave range SHF, which is operating in 3 to 30 gigahertz, where there are four bands being utilized C band in 3.6 to 7.02 gigahertz, X band 7.25 to 8.4 gigahertz, KU band 10.7 to 14.5 gigahertz, KA band 17.3 to 31.0 gigahertz. Then you have the extremely high frequency which uses fixed satellites in the frequency range of 30 to 300 gigahertz which is operational only during 38.6 to 275 gigahertz. And these are the services provided by Inmarsat. The services that are being provided by Inmarsat are as follows.
logic phone tax and data service via 64 kilobits per second channel inmarsat b was a digital successor of uh, inmarsat a inmarsat c was uh, used for internet email store and forward data messaging with message length of 32 kilobits per second in mars at d plus was used for data broadcasting to a pager sized and it was used for two way communication and gps service in mars at e was used for global maritime distress alerting beacons providing an accuracy of about accuracy of about 200 meters so in mars at m or mini m was used for voice fax data with a less rate and uh, having a uh, sim card facilities so the channel bitrate was lesser so inmarsat aero is the latest service which is used for aircraft operators and passengers so this is an example of inmarsat we have the earth we have the satellite in space so the vertical linear polarization and the horizontal linear polarization diagram is like this as the electromagnetic wave travels from satellite to the earth surface so we have the geostationary arc which is being marked and this comes under the linear polarization satellites this is how linear polarization occurs you can see it. so in the next case you can see the circular polarization same satellites are being placed in space the geostationary arc is present then uh, let us see how the circular polarization occurs so you can see the direction is that left hand circular polarization of the waves being passing from satellite to earth surface or the earth station or we called as the counter clockwise rotation similarly you can see here this is your right hand circular polarization or the clockwise rotation so these are the two circular polarization satellites available so next is the satellites different components the hardware units being present so we have the colors being differentiated so this blue means that it is command and data which comprises of the input output processor as well as the flight computer which controls it then the yellow is your pointing control which consists of the thermal blanket then we have the green color as communications so communication used here is your omni omni directional antenna or the high gain antenna or the transmitter receiver segment so then we have the power supply you can see the solar panels are the power supply in red color the solar panels will have arrays then the wireless collection mission payload so this is your mission payload which consists of the image sensor then we have the thermal control so the thermal blanket this is your thermal control which is golden yellow ish color apart from this we have the star trackers as the pointing control we have the bus structures interconnecting them then we have the reaction wheels that is present here to rotate according to the instructions of the satellite being received so after the inmarsat let us see the insat insat is an indian national satellite which was established in 1983 which is a joint venture of the indian department of space dys the department of telecommunication dot and the uh, indian meteorological department imad all india radio air and doordarshan dd so this is the inside is the largest communication system in the world 
This serves the television and communication needs of India. This carries about 199 transponders and a high resolution radio meter VHRR and CCD cameras for metrological imaging. So the futures of insect. Features of the Intel satellite is it is a multi-purpose satellite. It is used for telecommunication. That is used for uh, Telecommunication, Broadcasting, Metrology, Search and Rescue Services. Insert. Insert was largest domestic communication system in Asia Pacific region with 11 tenants in operation. The Insert is a series of multi-purpose geostationary satellites launched by Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. So the EduSat launched by the Geosynchronous Launch Vehicle GSLV F01 in September 2004 is India's first thermatic satellite dedicated exclusively for education services. So INSAT is being used to provide educational TV or ETV service for primary school children in various languages. So the INSAT provided facility of telemedicine also. So this INSAT has been a major catalyst for the expansion of television coverage in India. Next is the IMARSAT. IMARSAT stands for International Marine or Maritime Satellite Organization, where the headquarters is at London. So it is a British satellite telecommunication company that was set up in uh, 1979 by IMO such that it could enable ships to stay in touch with shore or to a call for help in an emergency no matter how far is the sea is being present so that emergency life saving services may be provided to the distressed people or the people in the ship so this is just an example of the immersat immersat fb so then we have the immersat satellite which transmits the signals to the ships. The Inmar satellite uh, signals are very received by the Inmar sat, uh, satellite earth station that gets the signals from the Inmar satellite about the location of the ship, navigation of the ship, what service is being required, what is its distance, what is its location, what is its issues. So that is given to the Immer satellite uh, earth station, so they transfer it to the nearest uh, internet call center such that they are being visualized through video teleconferencing, through telephonic network, through system to system interface, person to person interface through video conferencing, telephone to telephone networking. So this is how Inmarsat works. We have Inmarsat 3 just being launched in space. So the Inmarsat 3 will collect data from Inmarsat. The ships that is being present. So from the ship, which ship is being sinking in sea or in the ocean. So that will be recorded and that information is passed on to the nearby ships, nearby boats and nearby rescue coordination centers and to the nearby land earth station. So the monitoring of the uh, ships is being done continuously. So maritime services are being deployed here. So this is why we call this as uh, Immersat satellites.
So the Imagesat uh, database will collect all the information about the chips that have been deployed or that have been in motion. So those tracking will be done easily through this specific satellites. So registered information providers How this Imasat works is that we have in uh, Imasat network uh, coordination station. In the satellite, Which will have the navigation warning coordination, search and rescue, SCR coordination, meteorological message coordination. All this will be given to the MSR coastal earth stations. So from there, from there it goes to the satellite, and from satellite it goes to the ships, which has an enhanced group called receivers which is EGC so they will access all this information then they will give information to the earth and through the earth to the nearby ships so they come and rescue so this Imasat is being uh, maintained as a lead by USA which is having 85 member states this contributes in improving distress and safety of life at sea Communication, efficiency, and management of ships. This serves all needs of maritime communication and its services for over 5,000 ships, boats fitted with Inmarsat user equipment. So, this also involves national and international networks covering telephone, facsimile, computer, fax, etc. So, just like that, nobody can use this user, user equipment of Inmarsat, they have to register with the Inmarsat mobile services or satellite services state, then they can fit it into their boats or ships. So the frequency allocation here is L band, where for satellite to mobile. The frequency is 1535 to 154 2.5 megahertz and from uh, mobile terminal to satellite it is 1636.5 to 1644 megahertz so the satellite transmission from the to and fro occurs in the common system at uh, C band which is at 4.6 gigahertz so this is your space segment for Imasat, which has four geo satellites to provide global coverage. So any doubts till this, you can type in chat box. We'll have another two or three minutes time. I'm going to have it two or three minutes. If there is any query, type in chat box. Then we'll proceed further.
since there are no queries in the chat box, I go the further proceed on to the next topic, Intelsat. Intelsat series, which was launched during October 1982, is the first attack being launched in Sat 1A, and the mission was abandoned due to technical failure. In 1983, August, Intelsat 1B was being launched. 1990, it was being under operational. Intel 1C, Insert 1C was launched in July 1988 and it was awarded due to power system failure in 1989. Insert 1D was the last in the Intel Sat series first. It was launched in 1990. Then Insert 2A came as the first multipurpose Indian communication satellite which became fully operational. So the launch of Insight series satellites continuously was done approximately for every two to three years. So Insight today is being done by ISRO. So this today's Insight has 11 operation satellites keeping in Dr. Sardar Wallach Colorbys Vision Insight.com or Insight satellite communication application now includes telemedicine that connects rural health care facilities with modern urban medical centers. Insight is also providing disaster warning to the receiver installed along the cyclone prone east coast of the country. So the insect has improved the weather forecasting to a drastic level. So the Indian contribution to space satellite. Patients are being done by the Vikram Sarabhai. So Vikram Sarabhai was the founder of the first Indian space center, which is named after him as Vikram Sarabhai Space center which is now known as ISRO. So the Indian space program driven by vision of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai Kanista is the father of the Indian space program. So India has also launched an Apple Aryan passenger payload experiment and experimental communication satellite. So the father of Indian space program was born on 12 August 1919 till 30 December 1971. Please become Sarah Bai. There are some contributions by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam for ISRO, for Intel, for INSAT. who is considered as to be pride of the nation. Before his term as a president, he worked as an aerospace engineer with the DRDO and uh, ISRO. So, the Kabul Kalam is popularly known as the Missile Man of India for his work on the development of ballistic missile and launch vehicle technology. Kalam, a man with no authority over nuclear physics, but just carried on the works of Omi J. Baba and Vikram Sarabhai. So, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was the director of India's first indigenous satellite launch vehicle SLV 3. So, these are the different launches 
that were done by ISRO. SLV, PSLV, PSLV, GSLV MK1 and 2, GSLV MK3. So have a view on this by different launch vehicles, then we proceed further.
So the launch dates of various insight series, satellites, and its mission status. So insight 1A, 10 April 1982, which was deactivated on uh, 6 September 1982. Insight 1B, 30 August 1983, which its mission life. Insight 1C, launched on 22 July 1988, abounded in November 1989. Insight 1D, Launched in 12 June 1990, completed the mission life successfully. Insight 2A, launch date was 10 July 1992. The India's first indigenous communication satellite completed its mission life. So Insight 2B, launched in 23 July 1993, completed its mission life. Insight 2C. Launched on 7 December 1997, completed its mission life. Inside 2D, launched on 4th June 1997, became inoperable on October 4, 1997. Then Inside 2D T was launched, which completed its mission life. So Inside 2 E launched on April 3, 1999. April 3, 1999 is in still in service. Inside 3A launched on 10 April 2003 in service. Inside 3B launched on 22nd May 2000 is in service. Inside 3C launched on 24 January 2002 is in service. Kalpana 1, 12 September 2002 is in still in service. GSAT 1 launched on 8 May 2003 is in still is in service. Insight 3E, 28 September 2003, still is in service. Edusat, which was launched in, which was launched on 28 September 2004, is still is in service. Insight 4A, launched on 22nd December 2005, is still in service. Insight 4CR, which is a geosynchronous orbit, is in service was launched on 4th September 2007. So the performance of Insect is that it has reached about 85 percentage of the population through over a thousand television transmitters linked through an Insect series. So the educational programs were over 100 hours are telecasted every week. So the Insect service has become a powerful tool for training and development educational and is used by various agencies to provide continuing education and continuing in situ training, so remote training. So a pilot project that started in uh, November 1996, a tribal district of Madhya Pradesh in Central India is now in progress to educate the tribal community on various aspects of health, hygienic, family, planning, women's rights, etc. So till now we had seen the different uh, satellite networks that are being placed in space. Next we are going to see the a very specific antenna that is being used in satellite, which is VSAT. Let us see what is this VSAT first. So VSAT is explained as very small aperture terminal, which is a small device. It is a private earth station that can act as a pri small private earth station that is used to transmit and receive digital data, digital signals through a satellite. So VSAT stands for very small aperture terminal and refers to transmit or receive terminals installed at a dispersed sites connecting to a central hub via satellite using a small diameter antenna dishes of Diameter 0.6 meters to 3.8 meters. So the VSAT is used for both broadcast and interactive applications of effective data, voice and video transferring functions. <clears throat> so this bands, the C band, which has an uplink frequency of 5.95 to 6.425 gigahertz, the downlink frequency of 3.7 to 4.2 mega gigahertz. 
The issues being addressed by this VSAT is interference with ground, ground links, large antenna size. The XC band, which has the uplink frequency of 6.725 to 7.025 GHz, with the downlink frequency of 4.5 to 4.8 GHz, which had an issues of weak signals and large antenna size. So then the KU band, which has the uplink frequency of 14.0 to 14.5 GHz, the downlink frequency of 11.7 to 12.2 GHz. So this had issues of attenuation due to rain. So then the KA band, which has an uplink frequency of 27.5 to 30.5 GHz, with the downlink frequency of 17.7 to 21.7 GHz, which had high equipment costs. So the VSAT network mainly used geo satellites in KU and extended C band for application purposes. So these VSAT trans receivers integrate all necessary functions into a small, highly integrated outdoor package that provides excellent reliability in a wide range of environments and functions. So the VSAT installation is shown in this diagram. The information is produced at the hub having a very large antenna, which is about 15 to 36 foot antenna. So this hub controls and monitors the network through a network management system or the NMS. Information is sent up to the communication satellite, which receives, amplifies and beams it back to the earth for reception by the remote VSATs. So the VSATs consists of the VSAT mount and antenna and outdoor electronic. So what is necessary for this VSAT is that the dish is small, easily transportable and installation. Lead time is much shorter if it is compared to the terrestrial links. So we VSAT network allows rapid, low cost network reconfiguration and expansion to meet new or unexpected business requirements. So the cost of transmission and network operations are made possible by use of X C band satellite frequency and frequency time division, multiple access FT DMA and the frequency division multiple access FDMA and the time division multiple access TDMA transmission techniques. The advantages of using this VSAT is that it offers flexibility as adding a site is quick and easy. Its service charge depends upon the bandwidth that is allocated to network in line with your requirements. VSAT terminal prices are falling. The VSAT offers a wide, wide range of protocols and features providing extraordinary flexibility and virtual unlimited expansion capabilities. This VSAT network is typically engineered to achieve a minimum of 99.5 percentage end-to-end availability for all locations, which has no last mile issues. As it is mobile, it can be used for short term or emergency communications. Excellent for broadcast transmission. These are the main advantages, <coughs> main advantages that we that are being offered by VSAT, which are being deployed in satellites. So the application says that VSAT is an ideal satellite network that provides communication support for a wide range of applications, distance education retail networks, POS point of sale transactions, bankings, inventory, reservation systems, railway reservation or online bus booking systems, corporate networking, internet or internet access, corporate voice, file transfer, video conferencing, in a high speed internet access, it is used in browsing, email, e commerce, and it is also used in financial management. So, the typical usage is here. So, the antenna which is being present is of about having a, a dish of 1.8 meter antenna. So, that is given to the outdoor unit. Then, the signals that are being obtained by the outdoor unit are given to the indoor unit, which is IDU. Then, it is been transmitted to appropriate sections, terminal controller. Fax, Faximal devices, PBX, telephone exchanges, lands to the different systems. So tell this if you have any queries, type in chat box. Then we'll proceed on to the next slide. 